Hi everyone and welcome back. Over the last couple of months, we have been remodeling our living room, dining room, and kitchen. I'm gonna take you guys along with me, show you how I did this on an extreme budget. I will also be giving a pie safe that was my husband's grandparents a complete makeover. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to see the final reveal. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe button right below this video so you don't miss any future videos. Now our home is a modular home, and if you're not familiar with that, that is a home that is built in a factory, brought to your land, and set up on your foundation with a crane. We purchased our home about six years ago, and it was an extraordinary deal because we purchased the display model. That is a home that is set up at the sales center so people can tour through and see the floor plan. Because we purchased a display model, we were not able to pick out the finishes. So we decided that we would live in the home for about five or six years, save up our money, and then we can start making some changes to make it more our style. The first place I started was with the kitchen cabinets. This is one of the easiest and most budget-friendly ways to update your kitchen space. I started by removing all of the doors and labeling each one. Then I removed all of the hardware and placed each of those in a Ziploc bag so that I could reinstall later. I removed everything from the cabinets and placed them on a table in our kitchen as well as on our dining room table. This will prevent me from getting any type of paint on any of our items. Then I taped off all of the cabinetry against the wall to make sure that I did not get any paint on the wall. And we also went ahead and moved our appliances out of the way. Then I'm going to take a TSP substitute, which is a heavy duty cleaner, to wipe all of the items off to make sure there is no grease and no grime left over. Then you'll wanna take a fine grit sandpaper and go over all of the areas to really blend in any type of imperfections and make sure you have a nice smooth surface for your primer. You do not want to skip this part and I'll show you later why because sanding is very important. I used a bullseye 123 primer to prep my spaces by using a foam cabinet roller as well as an angled brush to get into those hard to reach areas. I decided to go ahead and use the brush first because I had a lot of beadboard and I needed to get in between all of those grooves. After the first coat of primer, it is still going to be very dark because I had dark cabinets. I knew that it was going to take me a couple of coats. Now, if you do not sand properly, you will get areas like I'm fixing to show you here on the door where the primer would not adhere all of those splotches right there in the middle. So I had to wait for that to dry, sand it with a fine grit sandpaper, and then apply a second coat. So it is very important to make sure that you sand these items. Then wipe all of that debris off. So this is how it's looking after the second coat of primer. And then I'm going to use Valspar's Cabinet and Furniture Oil Enriched Enamel Paint. This is a satin finish and it is ultra white. I'm going to apply it the exact same way I did with the primer using a separate foam cabinet roller and an angled brush. This paint is self-leveling so it gives you a perfect finish and does not show any roller marks or brush strokes. I purchased this from Lowe's. I decided to do all of my cabinets against the wall first, and then the next week I did my island. That way my kitchen would not be in complete disarray the entire time. I also painted the inside of my upper cabinets because when you open those doors, you will be able to see that. Another inexpensive way to update your cabinetry is to replace the handles. I purchased these from Lowe's. The next week, we started working on our living room to replace the flooring. We tore out all of the carpet, sections at a time. We removed all of the furniture except for our couch and love seat, which we just moved from one side to the other as we were working. We removed the carpet and then it was time to remove these tack strips all along the wall. That was super easy to do with just a hammer and a pry bar, but then we had to pull out 
all of the staples. I used a heavy duty staple remover to remove each of those staples and it was a lot of those so that was very time consuming. Once we had all of the carpet and staples removed we inspected our subfloor to make sure there was not any damage. I also took this opportunity to update the hearth on our fireplace by taping that off and then giving it a matte black finish to match our surround better. We chose a waterproof vinyl plank flooring that looks like wood. They're about four feet long and about seven inches wide. They have a lip on the front and then the left side at the end. And then they have a groove on the back and the right side. So you want to start with one line and make sure that it is straight and you start up against a wall. And you're just going to place that lip under that groove at the beginning piece and then lay it down flat and make sure that you have a consistent, long, straight line for your beginning. Then your next row, you'll take that lip and slide it in between up under the groove, but you want to make sure that your planks are not breaking at the same place. And you'll slide it right under that lip and then it will snap down in place once you have everything tight. And then it's also helpful to have a rubber mallet in case those seams aren't tight enough. You can use that as well as one of these plastic pieces that have a lip on the side of it. This you can place on that lip on the back of the wood and tap it gently so that those pieces will go together. This is gonna prevent that groove and lip from breaking. Then if you need to tap it to the side, you can add one on the end and tap that over so that it will connect to the other piece. We chose this flooring because it's waterproof and it is also scratch and scuff resistant. The directions in the packaging tell you to start in a left corner, make your first row, make sure that it is straight and also lay multiple boxes out so that you can mix them together and it will give it a more natural look. Then you can start with your next row and so forth and so on. We just did this sections at a time and then once we got past or close to our living room furniture, we just moved it back on top of that wood. We went all the way to the other side of the wall and originally we were only gonna do the living room. So we added this piece of wood and screwed it into the floor to make sure the floor stayed in place so that we could add the tea molding strip. We were so pleased with the outcome and how this flooring looks. It is gorgeous, it looks like barn wood. So once we were finished with that, we added shoe molding right at our baseboards and used a finish nail gun and then filled in all of those holes with some caulking. This is gonna give it a nice high-end finished look. Because we were so pleased with how the living room floor turned out, we decided we were going to do the kitchen and dining room floor. We went back to Lowe's to purchase some more flooring only to find out that it was discontinued. So we asked the flooring manager how many boxes they had left. And when they pulled that skid down, we asked them how much they would sell that to us for. And they ended up selling it to us half price. So that is a great way to find some discounts in your remodel if you find something that is discontinued and they have enough flooring for you to do then they could sell it to you for a much cheaper price. And we are so pleased with how it turned out in our kitchen and dining room. Now, before I give you the final reveal of how everything looks together, we're gonna work on a pie safe that was my husband's grandparents. So he brought this home and he said I could paint it and do whatever I wanted to. We're gonna give it a makeover so we could place this in our dining room. It's been in a storage building for quite a few years, but overall it is in good shape, except for a few minor dings, as well as I have to fix the drawers and some of the doors. As far as we can tell, we think it's at least 50 years old. I'm going to remove all of the doors and the drawers and then remove all of the hardware.
Because I'm going to be reusing all of the hardware, I'm placing all of those screws in a magnetic bowl to make sure I don't lose any of those pieces. Now the next part was to remove all of these wood pieces so that I could take the glass out. And I was super nervous about this. I was so scared I was gonna break this glass. But I took a putty knife and just very gently got behind each of those wood pieces and pulled those out. And actually one of the doors was missing one of the wood pieces. But once I got the final piece out, I was able to lift that glass out of the door and then set that to the side. I'm gonna give it a really good cleaning. And then once everything is painted, I can reinstall them. Now it is time to remove the contact paper. I'm using my husband's heat gun on a real low setting and carefully going over this to loosen up that adhesive. I really wanted to get at least one full sheet off of here so that I could make something for my husband's mother and aunt. So the first couple of times I was not able to get a full sheet, but the one on the top came off and I was so excited. And I'll show you what I made with this a little later on in the video. I chose to go ahead and remove the backing from the top of the cabinet just to make it easier for me to paint. And also because it was a very bright red, I knew that I was gonna have to paint this with quite a few coats of paint. Then it is time to fill in any imperfections and I am using DAP plastic wood wood filler. This is going to give me a beautiful finish in all of those areas that are already chipped or have small dings in it. Once that dries, I'm gonna go over it with some sandpaper and make sure everything is nice and smooth. I also went ahead and sanded all of the drawers and the doors as well as the cabinet itself. Again, sanding is very important because you want to make sure that your primer and paint adhere well. Then it was time to break out that TSP substitute and give everything a nice thorough cleaning. As far as the doors, I went ahead and set those up on pieces of wood so that once I was finished wiping everything down and it dried, I could paint each of those and it would just be easier for me to get all of those edges if they were sitting on pieces of wood. Then I made sure to clean everything very thoroughly and rinse it. I also went ahead and set the cabinet up on some pieces of wood to make sure that I would be able to paint the feet. Now, as far as the hardware, I decided to pour white distilled vinegar to make sure that it would remove any of the grime and some of that rust. And I allowed it to set overnight. Oh, look at all of that grime and rust that came off of there. Then it was time to get a wired brush. So I used two different sizes of wired brushes to really clean all of the crevices of these pieces. Then I'm gonna set those in a Tupperware dish and rinse them off and dry them very thoroughly. I also went ahead and cleaned all of those handles. Once everything was cleaned, rinsed, and dried, I took an emery cloth or like a scouring pad to remove any of the rust. And then I'm gonna lay everything out on a foam board. This just made it easier for me to put each of those screws down so that I'll be able to spray paint these. I'm gonna paint them with Rust-Oleum's Forged Hammer in the color Antique Pewter. This takes about two coats and it gives it an absolutely beautiful finish. And yes, I even sprayed those screw heads. Now it is time to give everything two coats of the Bullseye 123 Primer. And this is how it is looking after two coats. I cannot believe the transformation. And the doors are turning out absolutely beautiful. So I like to paint the backside of the doors first 
and then once those dry, I can flip them over and get the front side. I'm gonna be painting them with the leftover cabinet furniture paint that I used on my kitchen cabinets, which is an oil-enriched enamel in ultra white with a satin finish. This will take two coats of the white paint. To adhere the glass back into the door frames, I'm using an advanced silicone, you can find this at Lowe's, and a caulk gun. I cut a very small tip, and then I'm gonna go right in the corner, all the way around with one bead of that silicone. Then I'm gonna take my finger and spread it out to make sure it is nice and even coverage so that when I place the glass in there, it will adhere. Then very carefully, I'm gonna place that glass in there and then take the silicone and add another bead around the corner where the glass and the wood is. And again, I'll spread that out with my finger to make sure everything is nice and sealed. I'm gonna let it set overnight and I do not need to reapply the wood pieces. The silicone will hold the glass in place. The cabinet is completely dry. I've already added the back back on using the same nails, reinstalled all of the drawers. Now I can add all of the hardware and handles back on and very carefully place the doors back onto the cabinet. I'm going to add some battery operated puck lights that I purchased from Lowe's in a pack of six with a remote control in the top of the cabinet. Before I show you the final reveal, remember that whole sheet of contact paper I took off? I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree houses that have the marker board on the back, trace this out on the contact paper, cut it down slightly smaller to make sure that it will fit inside of the house. Then I'm gonna paint the frame itself with a brown acrylic paint on the back as well. Then add a layer of Mod Podge to adhere the contact paper inside of the house. If it has any wrinkles on it, I just heated it up with my hair dryer to kind of push any wrinkles out because that contact paper will really warm up with the hair dryer. These turned out super cute, and we're going to give that to my husband's mom and her sister as a tribute to this beautiful pie safe that was their parents. And now for the final reveal of the cabinet decorated. I've already installed the puck lights. I've decorated it with farmhouse items, including this honeybee rolling pin and honey dipper because my husband's grandfather kept bees we thought that would be a great way to decorate this. I kept all of the decorations fairly neutral and it turned out absolutely gorgeous. I love how bright and light and airy this feels and I could not be more pleased with how this cabinet turned out. My husband really didn't want me to record his reaction but he was kind enough to let me take a picture to show just how happy he is with how it turned out and being able to display this in our home. Now, for our living room reveal, I installed some barn lights on the wall. I did not hook these up to electricity. I actually used two of those puck lights because those puck lights I can dim and also put on a timer, and I think they turned out so cute. I made these floating shelves. I still need to decorate that bottom shelf, but I just wanted to show you guys, and the flooring turned out absolutely gorgeous. Now, we do have a few more minor projects to do, like the trim around the hearth, and I also want to redo my dining room table so that it will match better. I think I'm going to strip that down, restain it, and paint it. So if that's something you guys want to see, let me know in the comments down below. I can make a video of that. But we love how our flooring turned out and the cabinets and everything is so bright and beautiful and the flooring being consistent all the way through really does give it a higher end feel. 
I am so happy with how this turned out and I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found some inspiration. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.